Hi, welcome to week 5 of Ignite the Spark series and I hope you are really enjoying the series so far. And in this week, we will explore a very important topic that is Unified Analytics Engine. So many people consider Spark to be the Unified Analytics Engine. So what it is, if you're really curious, then continue watching the video. Okay. So what exactly is the real USP of Apache Spark? A lot of people used to ask me this question. Hey, Raghu, why do you think Spark is so popular? You go for any interviews, you get into any data engineering projects. People are always talking about Spark. So what is the real USP behind Spark? Is it because it is faster? Is it because it is open source? I mean, no, not exactly, right? The real reason why Spark is so popular today is because it is called a unified analytics engine. Sounds confusing? Let me explain. Okay, so before we understand what is this unified analytics engine and why that makes Spark so powerful, we need to understand the different type of workloads or the different type of processing that we do in a typical big data project. So the first one is what you see on my screen. It is called batch processing. Now batch processing is very common and people have been doing for, I don't know, for probably last 30 years or so. And, and what exactly is batch processing? So in batch processing, you collect the data over a period of time and then you store it somewhere and then you analyze it later. So this is also called historical data processing. A good example is, let's say you're working in a banking project, right? Uh, let's say you're working for a bank and you have all these customers with credit cards and a very big bank might have millions of credit cards in circulation. Now, every day there will be a lot of credit card transactions happening, right? And what the bank would do, they will collect all these transactions but they are not going to analyze them. Probably what is going to happen at the end of the month, the bank will analyze all the transactions and generate a bill and send it to the customer. You get the gist of it, right? So in batch processing, you collect the data first. Now this can be collected over a period of a week, a month, a year, I don't know. And then you analyze depending on a window, a time window that's called batch. So if you're uh, think, thinking about the same banking example, your manager will probably ask, hey, can you find out the person or, or can you find out the top 10 people who spent most amount of money using their credit card for the last month? So this is a classic example of batch processing where, you know, you're looking at top 10 spending customers for last one month. Now this can be one month, three month, six month, one year, I don't know. But historically, people have been doing this because this is one of the uh, most common ways to get insights to your historical data. So I just want you to plan the seed. I mean, I just want to plan the seed of batch processing in your mind so that when we discuss further, you are able to understand. Now, there are other type of processing as well, not only batch processing. For example, if you look at here, you have something called real-time processing. So what is real-time processing? Real-time processing, like the name suggests, is processing the data in real-time. What can be an example? If you take the same banking example, let's say you want to find out all the fraud transactions happening in your bank. Now, there are millions of credit cards in circulation and people might be using it. And maybe there are a lot of fraud transactions happening. Now, if you want to find out fraud transactions for credit cards, you should do something called real time processing. Why? Because let's say somebody swipe the credit card. You have to immediately get the data, process it and figure out whether it is fraud or not. So the bank has to process, I don't know, hundreds and thousands of transactions every minute in real time to figure out whether there is a fraud happening right now. So the important point is right now because it is real time processing, right? So you cannot wait. You cannot go back to the data for last one month and then figure out, hey, you know, something happened fishy maybe last month. That doesn't make any sense, right? So the second type of processing is real time processing. And this is very, very popular now. I mean, like pretty popular and there are many platforms who are doing it 
So that's the second type of processing. The third style of processing that people do is SQL based processing. Now this can be something like setting up a data warehouse so that you have all these tables and you can run SQL queries or this can be just creating some ad hoc tables and running SQL queries. But there is always fans for SQL and there is always room for SQL developers. They just want to explore the data using SQL. And even the business intelligence folks and all, they prefer SQL. So that's another style of processing I want to introduce to you. The other type of processing is machine learning. Well, it's not really processing, but I would say workload. The other kind of workload that you're going to see is machine learning kind of workload. So in the classic banking example, probably the bank would like to predict, you know, what will be the profit for the next quarter. So typically you employ a machine learning type of a solution for this or AI or these kind of things. The last thing that I want to talk about is something called graph processing, right? Now this is another type of workload, not your common type of workload, but again, very powerful. So graph processing involves representing the data in the form of a graph and then processing the data. Now, if you're looking at a practical example, something that I can share with you is if you look at say for example how LinkedIn works. So in LinkedIn you have a lot of people right now imagine each people like a point in a graph and then all of you are interconnected in LinkedIn right. So what LinkedIn does it traverses through this graph to find out people with similar interest people who were classmates in the same college people who like the same technology and then recommend each other. So for social media platforms like Facebook or LinkedIn and even for other use cases, graph is very powerful. Now you may be probably wonder wondering, hey Raghu, why are you talking about this? This is pretty important. So there are five type of workloads. There are many, but at least I want you to be familiar with five type of workloads. Batch processing, where you have historical data. Real-time processing, where you have real-time data and then naturally SQL, data warehousing, business intelligence style, then machine learning and then graph. Now coming to Apache Spark. Now you need to also have a brief look at the history to appreciate Spark. Now if you look at this picture, right, uh, don't worry, I'm going to explain this to you. Spark is called a unified analytics engine, right? Why? Now just look at this picture. See, in the world of big data, Hadoop was the first platform which gave a general solution, right? So Hadoop came in 2004 and Hadoop had this processing engine called MapReduce, right? And MapReduce was capable of doing only batch processing. And the other reason is that back in 2004, there is no machine learning, no graph. People were happy with batch processing. That was the only kind of processing that the industry was following. So Hadoop came and Hadoop said, you know what? Here is MapReduce your batch processing is going to work fine, just use it. But fast forward to 2007, 2009 and 2010, the demands increased in the industry. Now, like we discussed before, when we reached from 2007 to 2010, the people or the industry was demanding different type of workloads or capabilities from the framework. For example, people wanted SQL, real time, machine learning, graph, and batch processing also. Now you have to understand how the industry works, right? Hadoop was pretty popular at that point in time, but the drawback was like it had only MapReduce, right? Which was batch processing. So one of the first tools came that is called Taze. You can see in this small cloud, there is a tool called Taze, T-E-Z. Now Taze is an improvement on MapReduce. It's again a batch processing framework, but the difference is Taze is much, much faster than MapReduce. So people were demanding batch processing to be faster. So thus, Taze was invented. Okay. Now, another group of people, they were demanding for real-time processing, right? Now, remember, MapReduce cannot do any of this. It can do only batch processing. But when we reached 2009 and 2010, social media became more popular and the demand for real-time analytics increased, people thought like, hey, is there a tool which can do real-time processing? No. And that is when Apache Storm came to the market. Storm was created to process data in real-time. Happy? Not exactly, right? The other group of people said, okay, now we have real-time processing, but 
we want a data warehousing solution on big data. We should be able to run SQL queries. Our business intelligence tools like Power BI should be able to connect. Do you have something which speaks the language of SQL? The answer was no. But then Apache Hive was invented. Impala came, Drill came, Dremel came. They are all SQL dialect engines, right? And then the demand was for machine learning, you know, machine learning on big data or Hadoop and a tool called Mahout came. And then the demand was for graph processing on big data and then a tool called Giraffe came. You know where I'm going with this, right? See, by the end of, say, 2010 or 2012, the industry was filled with so many different tools which were capable of different type of workload. Now, what is the problem here? There were two problems. The first problem is if I were working in the industry, say back in 2011, matter of fact, I was working. <laughs> so I was actually struggling back in 2011. So let's, let's say you were working in the industry in the big data world back in 2011. You had to learn all these individual tools. Right? You have to learn Trace for Batch, Hi for SQL, Storm for Real Time, Mahout for Machine Learning. That's very difficult because each tool has a different API, different ways of working, etc. The second challenge was there were a lot of integration problems because these tools need to work together, right? I mean, so in a typical big data project or data engineering project, you want all of them. So integrating them together was a challenge. Enter Spark, right? So now let me come to the actual definition of unified analytics engine. What it actually means is that Apache Spark single-handedly is capable of doing batch, real-time machine learning, graph, and SQL type of processing. That means you download one framework, you install one framework, you get five capabilities all in one package. That's the USP of Spark. Now, this was proposed by Spark. And, and you know, in, in my experience, Spark started becoming popular somewhere around 2014 or 15. I started working with Spark from 2015, for example. So Spark was the first tool which came with this unified analytics engine. But going on, a lot of other tools also started implementing the same. For example, today, if you look at Kafka, Kafka can also do SQL, streaming, machine learning. Today, most of the modern day data engineering tools are equipped with this unified analytics engine. But Spark was the OG, the original, right? So this is what you call unified analytics engine. And this was a leap apart. This was a leap apart because people were struggling with all these different tools and different languages. And that's when Spark enters and says, you know what? You install me and forget about it. And, and this is a real beauty. You have to appreciate it actually because, you know, you don't have to install different tools. You don't have to integrate or manage different tools. Everything is available inside a single package. So when you download and install the Spark framework, it gives you different libraries within Spark, which is capable of doing batch processing, SQL queries, real-time analytics, machine learning, and graph all in one, like a Swiss army knife. <laughs> okay, I'm so happy that I explained it. I mean, I, I can't help it in some lectures. You know, you really become happy when you explain something and, and, and you feel contempt, you know, you, you're done it, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, so this is the reason why Spark is so popular and, 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 and that's called Unified Analytics Engine. Thank you. So that was about the Unified Analytics Engine. Consider liking the video and subscribing to our YouTube channel in case if you have not done so. And also try sharing with your friends who might benefit from this video and i will see you next week with a brand new lesson related to ignite the spark series thank you